I'd like to open the meeting. And I'd like to call for introductions. I second that. Thank you. Oh, um, I'm Evan. I'm a um, citizen advocate and vice chair. I'm Nicole. I'm an environmental advocate. Andre Phelps, neutral position. Uh, James Lenhart, <coughs> program manager. I'm off screen. Crystal Abrams, citizen environmental advocate. We're a very environmental advocate. Have a good day. Yes, we are. Thank you. And um, do we need to approve the agenda prior to? Yes. I don't, um, do you have copies of the agenda? Do I have copies? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I move to approve the agenda. Oh, I can't. I, I can't? Yeah, I, I'll go ahead and move to approve the okay. agenda okay. as it is. I will second that. All in favor? Oh, yeah. All, yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, none. Okay. Seeing none, movement passes. Oh, oh it's, what do I have to say? You have to just repeat. Them. Oh, there is no um, opposing uh, um, votes, so uh, yeah, the motion is approved. That's the next thing we have to do. Public um, comment? Oh. oh, yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, Open the floor to public comment. There are none. There are none. Okay. Seeing none, we uh, move on. Um, let's see. Uh, so, okay. Do I do I have to call? Okay. Do I have to call the meeting to order? Or did I already do that? You're okay. Right. Okay. Retain the floor. Let's, let's raise your hand. Okay. Okay. So that's that. Okay. So at this point, what it's, do I? It's just staff report. You staff report. Okay. I don't think it has to be. Not the hot seat. So I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Channel my mediocre white right mail. Can do this. Confidence. No okay. Reason. Yeah. So uh, we've had a few things happen over the last month since we met. Um, first of all, the V ordinance did pass city council um, pretty swiftly. Um, nobody had really any questions or anything, which relieved me greatly. Um, and so we were we finally actually got the uh, invoices that are out in the mail today. So we did have some issues between uh, the toxics program, uh, the reporting program, and the new finance program for the city because it was the first time we've had to do the interface and it wasn't too surprising that there were glitches. Um, we got that resolved and so just finally got the ball compiled and out the door. Um, added an extra note letting people know because we are at the end of the month and technically normally they're due by May 1st. Um, that is not reasonable, um, but if possible, they probably won't receive them until after May 1st. Um, we look, I let them know that there is an extra grace period in the ordinance as it was written to get them through the end of the month, um, but they will be due by then. Uh, so that is, so yes, yeah, so the, the ordinance is done, invoices are out, so we should start seeing uh, the checks coming in from there. Uh, also, after our last meeting, we talked about, again, the vacancies that we've had going on. I sent out a more personalized letter to uh, the businesses that have not been represented on the board right now. And uh, we actually got a response very promptly um, from one business, so gave them some extra information. I'm hoping this shakes something loose at this point. I haven't heard back yet from the city manager's office of if anybody has filled out the application. And what about the gentleman that was here at the last meeting? Uh, from Zippo Lock Mills, they are a non-reporting oh, okay. industry, so they they are not eligible, sadly, because he's very interested. Yeah, that's yeah. too bad. Um, Who's the business that is interested? Can you share it's, that? It's, oh gosh, pronouncing the name of it. Hercule? Hercule? Uh, oh. I feel like I know what you're talking about, but I don't know why. P R K U L E is that right? No. I think so. Yeah. So it's it, uh, I addressed the letters directly to general managers and owners. So trying to get past anybody who would just yeah. filter it out. And, uh, yeah. So and it was the owner of the company that contacted me. Okay. So I uh, gave him some more information and you know tried to just sell it a little yeah. bit more. And so hopefully we will see something right now. 
the stance from the uh, city manager's office is we're just leaving it open until we get somebody. Um, they don't like to do that because the city council has a certain schedule yeah. that they keep for it, but we really don't have an option. Um, so if nothing comes out of this one, we'll need to explore other options on how to try to shake something loose from, from hopefully a, somebody at one of the reporting uh, companies will be interested. And uh, going with my next item, that this might fix some of that too. So I've done a lot of research over the last couple months of businesses in the area looking through a couple different resources. Um, so far I've identified 184 businesses to reach out to. Wow. Um, These are businesses that are? That are within the SIC code range. Okay. So uh, in one of the databases I searched, it gave a what at that point was reported for what their employee count was. So some of them I know is that it's saying is below the 10 FTE, but I don't know how up to date that is. Mm -hmm. So bare minimum, I, I from but that said, there would be about 80 businesses mm -hmm. that would qualify. I'm betting that there's potentially more um, as far as by fitting just the criteria of the of the FTE and the SIC company. And how do you find out that they're located within the city? Great question. So that was the question we grabbed. Yeah, the map and what the map is. Well, there's now a tool that the city has broken up to all city employees of a GIS software. So I went through line by line every single one and said, is it in, is it out? Um, nice job. But at this point, to me this was a high priority, but we need to be, need to identify more of the businesses. Um, I also started meeting with other members in the fire marshal's office and we're tightening up that communication stream as new permits come in. Um, an example, the, um, the business that has taken over the old Hynix plant filed their hazmat uh, uh, permit, which means they're probably going to start going into operations within the year, which they will also qualify for the program. Yeah. So, we're trying to tighten up some of that communication so we get it more on the front side rather than having to do a lengthy research project. Mm -hmm. They get their permits through the fire marshal? They get one of them. Okay. So there is a specific one, and, and it, not everybody has to get it. It right. depends on your, for the fire marshal's office, it's quantity. Right. Um, ours is you know a threshold of any for right. having to pay a fee. Mm -hmm. So that means there are going to be some that will fly under the radar on that front, but we're just going to keep up the research. I've also modified our data tracking, so I, I'm basically tracking every single business that will be contacted with their results so that in the future we'll know if they were contacted. Um, also uh, working on a, a procedure for following up, so if somebody reports that they have five FTE don't need to be followed up with sooner or later to find out, do you have more now? Um, also modifying the, the initial questionnaire form that's a little bit more robust. And, and rather than saying, do you use hazardous chemicals? Mm -hmm. If you do, how much FTE do you have? Sign off on it. It's saying, to your, to your knowledge, do you use any, any hazardous chemicals or has, hazardous substances? Just flat out, what is your FTE? Um, I will be contacting you in the next couple of weeks to set up a face to face time to discuss the program and how it may impact your business. So basically, not making it, making it more of saying, this is coming. So we're going to start a conversation now just to try to get people to respond rather than just saying, oh no, I can make this go away by answering no. Uh -huh. that's, that's just not going to be in, uh, as much of an option. I'm um, also saying, who should I contact in your, in your company? So just trying to make a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. So just a point of clarification, mm -hmm. something you said earlier. <clears throat> you mentioned that um, the, the place that took the place of Heineken had just filed for a hazmat license. So mm -hmm. there, there currently isn't in place some sort of communication between the toxics board and um, the fire marshal for those hazmat. There, there was. There was, but being that there was the staffing change, okay. we wanted to make sure, is this, because being that there was a vacancy, there right. easily could have been permits coming. So we ran a search, made sure, do we have right. everything? Okay. Um, so we just wanted to make sure 
do we have everything down that if you guys get a request for a permit from a business, right. let me know. I will find out what the SIC code is. Yeah. Okay. And because that seems that seems important. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's and it's something that that is kind of a well, of course that should happen, right? But it's one of those things that we were seeing that because of the vacancy could easily have mm -hmm. slipped by, um, and just the nature of a lot of these types of things where if one thing happens over here, nothing happens over here. Right. The city doesn't have necessarily a very unified permitting process for all these different things they have to get. So we're just trying to make sure that we have all of our, our ducks in a row. Yeah, but it's really hard to capture new business on this mm -hmm. to the city. Mm -hmm. And the biggest, and really the ones coming in through hazmat, those are the easiest ones to catch. Right. Oh, yeah. right. mm -hmm. Because there's a record saying, yes, they use a known hazardous chemical in a large quantity, but it's when they don't use those large quantities that is hard mm -hmm. to find out. Um, and even within the, I went through and looked at the last couple years, mm -hmm. or several years, that uh, Joe did, did this process and have found some that I'm positive do use hazardous chemicals right. that as they sit on our list, but I think there's a misunderstanding of what those are. Mm -hmm. Right. So an example is there's been uh, a couple of distilleries, a couple of breweries, mm -hmm. uh, bakeries, all those uh, all of them are saying no we don't. Right. But well, they don't understand what the definition is. Saying. Sodium chloride is on the list. Mm -hmm. That means that a bakery is saying. going to be in the program. Right. Because if they meet the SIC code, which mm -hmm. they do, it's just often they're looking and saying, well, I'm not a manufacturer. Right. So that's part of the language I changed in that letter, is because let's not use a term that people are going to define as, I'm not building a car. It's like, no, but you are creating something for somebody else for consumption right. in some way. Mm -hmm. By the way, um, in their annual report, we do call them manufacturers. Okay. So that might be something Yes, okay. thank you. Yeah. Um, so as far as the numbers, again, 184 businesses right now are I'm scheduled to reach out to. Uh, I am having the uh, city attorney just once over the letter to make sure no glaring mistakes are happening uh, between the letter and the charter. Uh, we have I have 14 past contacts I'm going to be following up with that I believe either potentially could have FTE changes or may have not understand may not understand the substances they use are probably on our list. Um, even a, a cabinetry shop that I'm sure they probably use something like acetone, because every cabinet shop does. And they think they don't use something that, you know, so that's where we are there. Uh, and then we have currently eight in the onboarding status that are, we need to uh, get fully into the program. Uh, one of those, which is the uh, is the next one, well, next item on the list, is our Komodo, and I'm actually meeting with them this week. Um, I'll be walking through their facility and going over everything with their their safety and environmental person. Their automotive painting? No, they are the new electric vehicle manufacturer. Okay. Yeah. A little one person, two person. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of neat little little company, but they're planning on ramping up considerably mm -hmm. um, over the course of this year. So they are, they're already on board. Um, their safety person is actually an ex-firefighter from the fire department here, so he's all on board with it. It's just we have to set the time to talk, so that's what we're doing on Thursday. Uh, and then I have several more, too. I'm waiting to hear back from several meetings with them. So that's where we are with those businesses, and that's a total of eight of them. And then last of all, lawsuit update, again, we uh, all the the previous uh, determinations were affirmed uh, with their appeal, so none of their requests were granted. Uh, but they have requested an extension on the deadline because uh, to evaluate if they're going to appeal to the state supreme court. Mm -hmm. Not surprising that they asked for the extension. Right. Um, the likelihood still be going to the state supreme court, or that they will want to actually view it is. Low, um, just because of the niche that this all lands under. So I will update all of you the next update I get, which would be probably in about a month, hopefully. And so, at what point are they um, liable for paying their dues? They are liable now. So the city attorney has already reached out with all the, the past due that is there. Um, they are also receiving their new invoices for this year. Okay. So it is all due 
Uh, but there's only so much we push until we hit that final deadline. Mm -hmm. um, say, because the, the judgment was, no, you cannot leave the program. You do not, you, you are bound by this. So uh, probably in the next month or so, we, you know, hopefully we get word saying that it's done. Um, and then once I hear from the city attorney what they're, how they're negotiating with the, uh, with the other attorney, it's really, given that maybe this, the program might expand like three times, I mean, in terms of the number of reporting businesses, that means, you know, a net drop in, you know, the amount of money that each of the individual businesses pay also, like a full staffing, you know, 100%, and then, and then, and then some. So I'm just thinking, trying to think, like, is there, I mean, maybe this is too early to discuss, but like, are there things that, that are on the wish list of making a robust program that now are maybe within reach? That we can be thinking about, you know, moving forward, or is that just something? Potentially, yeah. I mean, potentially. I mean, but at this point, it will, we will see um, if we see people come in this year, um, we will see an influx of funds this year because they have to pay immediately once they're fully identified and everything's set up. They pay for that first year, and so we will see an influx of funds. And then next year, um, we should be seeing a dramatic decrease in the amount per FTE. Mm -hmm because uh, if we see a lot more uh, businesses in the program, mm -hmm. which also means that just the, uh, the expense to the individual businesses should decrease. Seems like it would be good, you know, they'll, they'll all like that, it might be a good, yeah. yeah. So that is the extent of my update. Yes. That's exciting, yes. Great work on, on mm -hmm. digging around. I mean, that's, yeah, that, that's huge. It took a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it, took, yeah. it was it was multiple places, but it, it was definitely worth it once I started finding things. Yeah. Have you been looking at other permitting entities, like, to figure out, to look at, you know, who's getting permits for, because we had talked about that on the time, so permits for stormwater and those sorts of things. That, I haven't, I haven't gone that route okay, yet. I started fine. here as far as what's existing, and then one of the next things uh, that I have been mulling is starting to talk with, like, PE. Um, because they would be the ones to handle most of that. And, and we've had some preliminary conversations, but trying to figure out how to get in a notification line with them. Yeah, okay, great, great, excellent. And what is, <coughs> what is PDD? Oh, sorry, uh, planning and development. That's the atrium downtown? Yeah, that's yeah. The, in the atrium downtown. And a couple other tucked away places throughout the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So between them and, and public works, but most of it goes through planning and development okay. and structure. So as a permit would come in or or as businesses would be expanding or well it wouldn't necessarily be on an expansion front, but it would be on if so the mm -hmm. here's the biggest challenge for within that I've seen within the city of Eugene is we don't have a specific business license process. Oh interesting. Um, I from okay. my time up in Portland mm -hmm. That is what you did. You normally got a metro license and it covered a bunch of different things for a bunch of the different little mm -hmm. municipalities and it tracked the process for the businesses. Eugene doesn't have that. So that means they have to get specific mm -hmm. permits for different things uh, and that just makes it a little bit harder than to have a one stop. Right. When somebody comes in, a notification goes out in one direction. So I have to work with the individual places where they're getting those. So we're trying to work with um, with PDD and, and the like to find where those might be. Okay. So like a uh, business walks into Atrium and says, "I want to start this chemical manufacturing or whatever," and then they say, "Okay, you know, here's what you need to do, and here's the toxic board program. Here's this form." What it would probably be is that is that PDD would contact me saying, "We just got a request for mm -hmm. this permit," and so then I would reach out to them. Individually. Okay. It's really about us finding out who's getting permits for different Yeah. Them. Because it seems like I remember doing student audits and and um and it would be like they couldn't graduate till they had to come and see me. Yeah. And the problem is due to the nature of how our charter is written, we don't actually have an enforcement to hold up yeah. that becoming a okay. business. Okay. We uh, it's on the back side. Mm -hmm. So. That's that's just one challenge we have. Mm -hmm. um, if there was potentially a like a, a larger 
you know, city process for them mm -hmm. or a business like a business license process. That may that would potentially change that because they can just say you have to have all these things in line yeah, exactly. for us to give you business license, but there's right. nothing in, in, in that in play like that. Uh -huh. So we just have to it, it's more of us making the, the intentional contact, which in some ways can be better. Um, because it's more personal, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it becomes less of a confrontation about it, but it becomes more of a get somebody on board and have that communication. It's, like it's kind of a detective game rather than uh, they have to walk through this door and pay, you know do that thing. And it seems like if you could layer, I mean, in some kind of a, a form where you know it pops up. And, you know, it would be great at this yeah. juncture. There's not something like yeah. that in place. That's a little beyond even what I can necessarily yeah. just say, let's do this. Yeah. Um, it's more. It's you know. The, my hope would be that something like that would happen. Mm -hmm. At this juncture, that's just not uh, not in play. I'm just trying to think whether we can like ask somebody from the planning department to you know come in and talk to us or or, or have or have a meeting and just say like, is there some. Uh, that's additional, that's yeah, what that's will be. That's, that's what's will, okay. will be happening down the road. Okay, that sounds great. Thanks for that time. Some signatures initially, or, or it would be a full, it would be full a full ballot proposal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, that's a, that's the threshold of. That is the understanding at this time. So that's right. There will be a larger conversation with the, the city attorney along those lines. And the other option is a legislative change, okay. which we've talked about in the past. Mm -hmm. We have tried to um, work with city council to support some sort of legislative change, and we did have somebody a few years ago who did write up. We have that. Um, Language. Yeah, some language that was proposed. I can't remember which legislator it was. Other than Krasinski. Oh, okay, I remember. But, yeah, so. yeah some, uh, a former board member went yes. up to uh, Salem, did some, you know. Wrote up some proposed language, brought it to us. We've attempted to get the city to support it, which is actually something that we put in previous um, recommendations, mm -hmm. is to get the city to support a change legislatively. Okay, so that can stay on as an opportunity when the political train is right. Uh, and this is one of the things that we can potentially add to it. If we talk, of, I mean, I don't know how businesses feel about this. Could this, could, would, could they, is there potential up, um, issues that they would say, well, most businesses you know, don't want more regulation. Yeah, okay. yeah, you can really yeah. count on. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is still talk going on at the state of trying to do a statewide yeah. right to know program. Yeah. Um, but it's no, that's not allowable because of um, you no know, the um, governor um, Kitzhaber made that not possible. Okay. Yeah. Wasn't there an initiative in it a couple like two years ago that almost passed, but then was like an initiative. or initiative um, oh. um, for a statewide? They're, they were trying. Um, they were trying. I thought that was Portland. I know. Um, it was statewide. The state that, fire uh, marshal is trying. Okay. Yeah. Not yet. So I talked to the well, governor can tell me that it's possible. Okay. For any other communities to put together the time to Kids, what are you doing? <laughs> so, but yeah. you know, Lisa Arkin would be a really good yeah. option if any of you wanted to look at supporting something, um, some legislative change, which I think could be made uh, to benefit both the you know changes that would such as having non-reporting businesses be able to sit on the board, you know, and also what we were mostly working on is um, what the, the main thrust of what we we're trying to for was the fee cap that is set at two thousand dollars, which doesn't deal at all with any sort of inflation. Yeah. Or, and then yeah. it is, as we have talked many times, it is um, you have some businesses paying. It's not progressive. Right. Like it should be. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the city council was on board with, they supported that initiative, and it was very close to passing, is my understanding. Um, oh, is this, are we talking about the same thing? The statewide? State statewide, the statewide thing. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm confused about that. It was a couple years I, ago. I don't know, yeah, I don't know yeah. that full history. Yeah. Um, I can just say as far as the cap, there's nothing the city can do about the cap. Yeah, okay. That's, that's state, yeah. and uh, that has been upheld, and it, it, it may not be the best formulated, mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of the hand we're dealt at this juncture. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. Let's get to know what we have that, though. Okay. Yeah. 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 okay. So that, yeah, that's all I have as far as um, the, the vacancies. Okay. okay. If there's any ideas. Yeah. I was going to ask. Okay. <clears throat> so you're onboarding new businesses, mm -hmm. or at least you've identified at least 80 businesses that you believe are uh, qualified. Would it make sense to maybe include a sentence about how um, it is possible to join the toxic board? And that will be mm -hmm. part of the conversation. Yeah. Is, is actually yeah. for these businesses coming mm -hmm. on, especially if they right. are to the level of a reporting. Mm -hmm. um, but all of them will be talking to that, that aspect of saying, you know, this is this is another element of as you're gonna be in the program. Right. The of if you are reporting to the entity, that is the biggest threshold, mm -hmm. the biggest criteria um, for a business ad right. industry advocate and getting your voice on the board is never mm -hmm. a bad thing. Right. So really trying to mm -hmm. Recruit. Encourage that and recruit that for any new business coming into the program. Yeah. So, so you, uh, we're finished with the toxic core vacancies. Okay. Oh, nice. Set it over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the long range. So, over. sorry, these are black and white. Um, but this is just our uh, draw.
draft of uh, a concept for the annual report. Oh, no, I remember voting on that. Seems like so. It was so long ago. I started on this back in February. <laughs> well, it was before your time, actually. Yeah. yeah. By the way. The, the, um, one of the articles that talks about the statewide uh, initiative for this toxic way to know law, um, Lisa Arkin wrote. So oh. I can send it. I'm going to send it to Jane. Please, Please do. Thank you. So fundamentally, the big so the biggest things I did as far as looking at for the next annual report is. Uh, again, adjust it from maybe a memo format to something that's a little bit more like a standard report. I did add some some charts, combine some of the data tables, just to make it stand out a little bit, give a little bit of comparison, um, make it look a little more technical. I like it. I think, yeah, the graphics are good. Some of the biggest areas that uh, it would be the review notes obviously aren't in the printed version. Um, on the digital version that I sent out to everybody, they should be there. Uh, there's one of the biggest areas that we have that I can't do a lot with is the toxic sport program recommendations. Um, that's, uh, that's something that uh, is that I'm looking for uh, the board's input. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, for these graphs, are are these parts per million? Millions of what? Which where which? Uh, in both of them, so it's the chemical output, and then top environmental release streams emitted to the air and discharged to sanitary sewage treatment. What are the units on that? So that the, the, the quantities are in pounds. Okay. Some of the main items that you think are the most important. 
The hard things I don't because I don't have the history mm -hmm. for it. So I'll just, how we've done it in the past is that um, advocacy has gotten together, put together their recommendations, okay. industry's done the same thing, come back to the table and we've discussed them. Um, so if you look at, which is one way to do it, mm -hmm. um, and then we've wordsmithed it together. And I think some of these already can be removed. Mm -hmm. So, like the second and third one, I don't think. But, I mean, we could, yeah. this year in particular, with James being new, and, um, you know, I think it could be pretty simple what we say what our recommendations are, which we can look again at the first one, this, uh, you know, this legislative action, see if we still want to support that. Um, I haven't heard of anything going forward with that. But, um, but then really just maybe us recommending uh, the, maybe, you know, well, since James is new, that we sort of downsize it a little bit in terms of what we're working on. Well, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, I think we started. Oh, so. <laughs> um, I was just I'm thinking about if, if I'm, um, let's say we, if we take the, um, the recommendation for, um, I'm not sure if it's in this language anywhere, for that, that potential um, statewide bill off the table, would the city council be um, looking to us, you know, in the next legislative session? I'm just trying to think if, I don't know, would there be a, a, just, a good justification for not recommending the... I'm not suggesting taking that out. Okay, I'm just okay. saying that there isn't anything currently that I know that's being put forward. Yeah, okay. So, uh, we could okay. also um, recommend some of the things that you've already suggested. Yeah, um, so, like, yeah. continue to streamline the, continue to streamline the reporting system, right? Mm -hmm. So, to bring, uh, like you were saying about the, the has-been licenses, I think that makes a lot of sense. So, to really streamline mm -hmm. the sources of your information for onboarding. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it is something along the lines of um, continue to develop um, uh, uh, inter, uh, you know, internal city processes and communication strengths to, mm -hmm. uh, to ensure new businesses are, are brought into the program. Mm -hmm. Uh, as uh, to comply with charter requirements, you know, things something like that. Something like that. Something yeah. like that. I don't yeah, continue outreach to ahead, business right. and community to yes, or program goals, kind of yeah. gen generic language. Um, timeline Centralized for, reporting streams. Timeline for providing these recommendations. What is the when should we do this? I I look to the board on that on that guidance at this point. Um, okay. I. If we want the report done sooner, then sooner the better. If we're fine giving it so a, a few months to finish it, then that's okay too. Again, there is no hard deadline within the charter for the annual report. Okay. It's just there's supposed to be an annual report. So. Um, so is it? Could we make the suggestion to include in the next meeting agenda a few minutes to discuss? Um, that's good. Yeah. Great idea. Right. Yeah. yeah, and then and then we can check in at the end of that and see if we need another discussion and you know, continue from there. Mm -hmm. Do you think you would want to meet together outside of the? Mm -hmm. and that's how it's sort of. I'd be into that. Yeah. 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 Just good. because that way you can just bring mm -hmm. what your yeah. priorities are. Yeah. Um, and then it Get just organized. makes it easier to have bring it here. Yes. beforehand. Yeah. That's right. Okay, so we can speak. So uh, would we be a subcommittee speaking yeah. about business outside of so that it's not it's in, still it remains in compliance with the right. board yes. charter yes. stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we just, I'm happy to do that. If you, if you all. Yeah. And it can be for this. It can be. I guess well, it could be after me now. It could be another day. We can give us a chance. It's a good idea though. Yeah, it's a short meeting and, yeah. and then talk. 
to the department. Well, I want, I want to bring this to my organization yeah. and yeah. talk yeah. about it yeah. with my organization mm -hmm. and then yeah. bring That's a recommendation. Awesome. Yeah, I want to think about yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's good to connect with your external allies a little bit in your community. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so maybe we could plan to do it later this week or early next week, okay. if that works for other people. Later next week. This week is crazy for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, later in the week in general is good for me. Fridays are pretty not. Oh, yeah? Okay. So. Then I will reach out to our other members who aren't here, which is our, our business advocates. Yeah. I'll yeah. let them know kind of what the plan moving forward on this um, to afford them the same, the same opportunity. Yeah. Cool. Great. Sounds good. This refers to the impact and gap analysis report um, from 2014. So, my. Which? Um, so, under this, this section, it's not in this. Oh, yeah. Um, this says that they pulled all of these recommendations pretty much from the 2014 report. Mm. So, I mean, I think. Any ideas you have, they don't have to be something that's just right here. Right. But, um, yeah, and I, and I left basically that whole section unchanged because mm -hmm. I really didn't have anything to put in there. But I, right. wanted, to, I wanted to keep the space. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sure we can come up with something. Okay, so this is kind of just like the template from before. It, it kind of does. Yeah. It, I just left that unchanged. And again, if, on the digital version, you can see it all highlighted. Mm -hmm. okay. Sounds good. And then my only other big question is, outside of the annual report, is there anything else that is burning that people want to have on the next, potentially bring up on the next meeting? I mean, from my experience, these kinds of recommendations can take a whole meeting. Exactly. So yeah. Leaving plenty of time for that yeah. is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it might be like something we need to discuss in more detail. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It will. That was my most political meme. <laughs> Very different. Yeah. Um, Can I request that on here uh, that when we have something like review draft toxics program report that it indicate whether we're going to make it sit? I mean, I can't tell if this is a voting. Before we used to write vote. Mm -hmm. and, or not, you know, discussion. So if there's anybody you can just after that tell us because I was a little confused about what we're going to do today. No problem. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. Previously, on the ones when I knew we were going to do a vote, that I put that on there. And okay. this one I really did because I was like, I don't think we will. So I'll, I'll make sure to, to give a clarification okay. point. Just discussion or mm -hmm. decision required something. <coughs> So if me if we all meet by the end of next week, mm -hmm. we could be prepared sometime in any time in May to come back and I'm I mean depending on what you hear from the other board members, I mean I don't see why they couldn't be so they couldn't do the same. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a reasonable timeline. Yeah. Yeah, don't let it, don't kick the can down the road too far just so we can we're sure. all still on the same page. So usually if the meeting's in a month, it's like a really good time. That's kind of what we've been doing is setting that about. And getting it to him in three weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Does that sound? Yeah. Yeah, right after this meeting. Like, yeah. So that totally. the rest of us can review it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. My calendar. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm gonna say tentatively yes, and then I just want to make sure to check with my 
So May, we're saying May 10th. May 10th, and do we want to go out to an establishment and have beverages together? I'm, I'm, I'm support that. Okay. I second that. Okay. But I mean, yeah, because you're downtown. I'm which, downtown. Okay, and you're on campus. University, yeah. Yeah, so okay. we'll go somewhere. Yeah, okay. wherever. Mm -hmm. Everybody has preferences. Okay. I can't think of a preference, but okay. I am opinionated about my beverages. Oh yeah? As any organ. Yeah. Well then how about you can name, if you want, you can name the meeting location because I'm, I haven't been I'm the least picky out of okay. all. Is that good? I haven't been Where's there. That? It's kind of downtown. Okay. It's by the farm. It's Claim 52. I haven't been there. I have been, been there. Is it good or no? It is good. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, let's do it. Claim 52. This is all on record. <laughs> yeah, this is very important. So important. Yeah, the community, come voice your opinions at the Are you sure you want to? Where, yeah, where yeah. requests. Um, yeah. May 10th, May 6 30? Yeah, 6 30, claim 52. Yeah. I'm not going to give you my phone number on record because I don't want to. <laughs> I have your email, it's okay. 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 Sounds good. Okay. Um, so at this point, does anybody have any other? Okay, so um, I I'm going to. Wait. I'm sorry. I think. Do you guys want to talk at all about this report? Did you guys go through it? Did you have comments or other than the recommendations? Um, I mean, I agree with. I, I I agree with what you said earlier. It's not. I know that you list the quantities in pounds. Um, but then as you read the chart, I think that if you're skimming through this and you're an average person, you might not really know what you're looking at. So just including like the units more consistently uh -huh. is something that I think will help people understand what they're looking at. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm, this is good. I think that you're on the right track here. This is really great, really great work so far. Yeah. I like the visuals. I like it. It's clear. Uh, yeah, some kind of conclusion statement would be good. So mm -hmm. maybe something, I don't know if, if you're going after this, but there does seem to be, I mean, there's obviously a trend in increased fees, right? So I'm assuming that also trends with increased revenues for the toxics board. Does that, no? no. no we're not revenue, good. but increased. No, because we, yeah. we're, we're just, we, everything is, breaks even, right? Yeah, okay. we break even every year. Right. Um, Sorry, revenue is an incorrect word. So the challenge with it is, if, if there's nothing, I don't have anything here showing program cost. Right. Um, which there was, but uh -huh. there's normally, there normally a trend of increased program cost. The reason, we like this year, where we see a decrease in the program fee, is primarily because we have a decrease in program cost. Uh -huh. Whereas, say. Um, next year, if we have an increase in the amount of businesses that will be in it, we're going to see a decrease in fee. But that doesn't mean program cost decrease. It just means we have more uh, resources to pull from. Yeah, so it's some some um, reporting on that could be useful in terms of, for us anyway, um, understanding um, where the board is, especially at, with regards to um, making recommendations to change this two thousand dollar cap and making recommendations to um so uh so these. program cost yeah so well just understanding i mean how it's you're saying it sounds like it breaks even which is the goal yeah. um but understanding how tight that is and, and whether like whether or not growth of the program or, or growth of the industry and the program would like projections so that we can make a recommendation am i making sense no um, so we looked at the budget we come up with how much it's going to cost us to run the program, and then we took that value, mm -hmm. and we basically, even me, we basically divide it by how many businesses we have, and that's what our fee ends up being. Okay. So, so that's, it's sort of a working. Increases. And it's a little more complicated than that. That's, yes. that's, that's yes. the yes. fundamental yes. element, but we also have to take into account, you know, fee cap. So basically, I yeah. go through with the projected FTE, mm -hmm. that, or the reported FTE, take, okay, the, this is uh, this is what the program cost is. Okay. And then say, and then calculate through, uh, this is how much we need, and so, to, and by the calculations, it looks like, uh, it looks at, okay, if the business hits that 2,000 cap, then it blocks it there, and 
So it, it's, it's a little bit more involved, but yes, that is mm -hmm. the fundamental element is we go by how much will the program cost, now how does that shake out by all the criteria to mm -hmm. end up what is the actual FTE cost. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So it's sort of internally controlled for that. Yeah. Um, so then my next question would be how many businesses um, hit that $2,000 cap? Because if it's one, it may make less of an impact to do that change. If it's 10 or 15, that could be a big deal. Yeah, and, that, and also that number will change as the right. amount per FTE changes. Because yeah. right now, I believe it's in the 20s, 20, 23, 24 FTE. Hits the hits the two thousand uh, cap. Um, mm -hmm. If there are more businesses, that obviously that amount the, the will decrease because you won't hit that amount as quickly. Are you talking about changing the, the cap? Or? Oh well, it's one of the recommendations is um, to change the charter, right? Um, it's a legislative change. It's to support a state legislative yeah. change to increase or have some type of yeah. graduated increase. Mm -hmm. um, of the cap. Mm -hmm. I know Joe was pushing for that, right? Well, she wasn't pushing for it, the board was. OK. Because really, what it, mm -hmm. it's, it's um, yeah, you, you have, well, I think the wording gets a little complicated. But so you have some businesses that are paying more, mm -hmm. um, and you have some large businesses that are paying this 2000 yeah. right? which always stays the same, mm -hmm. whereas as years go by, you're going to have yeah, business as well. Mm -hmm. And as it was uh, evaluated by legal counsel, it's not illegal. It's, it's a perceived in, uh, in word, uh, discrepancy dis or injustice. Yeah. Inequity. Inequity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I knew it was one of those words in there. So it's a perceived inequity, not necessarily an injustice. So, okay. so it's, it's one of those where it, it stood up in court. Um, so the only way to do that is for a legal option to say, you now we're going to adjust what that, or a, a, a legislative option, I should say, okay. to adjust that. And that was but it doesn't point. have to stay there. So that's where I was saying, you mm -hmm. know, it could be this discussion about, it could be anything that you support, um, let's say, adding a, a recording non-reporting business to uh, being able to sit on the uh, board. So, so it can be okay. anything yeah. that we support. It's just at this time we had a specific, we had two specific um, legislative proposals. So okay. One we um, supported and one we didn't. And, and, and that's the challenge is looking like there's a wide, the, the field's wide open as far as recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, anything yeah. from should there should more businesses be included in the program or not? Or you know, yeah, supporting legislative options or all those types of things are technically. Yeah, that's right. The board can the board can recommend all sorts of things. But <laughs> yeah, what's reality? What will happen with that is a different story. Yeah, because there because there was the central premise that was um, you know pushed forward with changing uh, you know making statewide and then. Near the end, it looked like it was gaining momentum, and then a, and then a second proposal was placed on the the, the ballot. To, and it, is that right? Like there was there was two different. What we're talking about. Two different, different things. different things. Okay, never mind. Yeah, scratch that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Spark maybe. Yeah. Anyway. Still not sure about the one that you're. I could be. I could be confused. To. It's a common occurrence. No. <laughs> 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 One of the other things that we have talked a lot about in the past is putting, um, and it wouldn't be like right this year, right? But we, we kind of pulled back that five thousand dollars that we had used and we had set aside in the past, um, and that was in order to keep the fee lower. I don't know if you guys remember about the budget. So it might be, you know, that one of the things is that if we have incoming programs, you know, our, we would recommend that we bring back that five thousand dollar line item. Um, to also with the purpose of trying to make this reporting uh, easier, more consistent with other reporting programs. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just coming up with yeah, like, I know what you mean. like ideas. 
Yeah, because we put that money into that database for Excel auto-populating Excel sheets. Uh, oh yeah, from that, previous from previous years, years. Yeah. and then it sounded like it was it said some limited utility. We we have but, that. Yeah, and, have and it, it, it it does work. Um, people have been happy with it. Yeah, not not as many people use it. It depends on how many. The ones that have a lot of line items yeah. definitely use it. Yeah. It's the ones that that you know when you have ten, it doesn't necessarily save you a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, but when you have a hundred, it saves you a whole lot of time. Okay. Yeah. That might be something. Is doing some some outreach to the businesses what they would like to see. Mm -hmm. You know, if we were able to get this. So I'm just, you know, I'm just like, yeah. if, you know, we would support bringing back this plan, if we could, you know, and, and along with that do some outreach to businesses for what they would like to see the reporting besides getting rid of it, how they would like <laughs> to see it, if yeah. there's ideas that they have for yeah. something like And, and, and we, do, we, do we provide a, an opportunity for businesses to, um, like, you know, have a questionnaire? In, or, I mean, I guess it's just part of the program, like, if they ever want to have, you know, questions or comments, they have that. But, I wonder if there's ways to get them, like, there's this one thing that they really don't like, and how do we address that, make it easier, and, and I don't know. There, there are ways. Um, there are ways, everything from trying to do in person, which takes a lot of time, so that means labor, yeah. um, to um, developing a communication string, anything from, uh, we just had, a, you know, a, a, an email blast that goes out saying we've recently had a board meeting. Here's here's a link to that. Um, if you have any feedback on on, on things that, that uh, where you would like you know that you would like to send back to to the program, here's a survey link. You know, and there's there's uh, there's always options. It's uh, not necessarily that they've all been done, mm -hmm. uh, but yes, there are there are ways to uh, try to elicit feedback loops from from other entities. Okay. Which would probably be, um, you know, again, I've been bringing up for a long time, just better business outreach. Mm -hmm. I'd really like to have that be a recommendation, something that we can some time into. Because I think that that could you know, potentially solve some of these issues. Yeah. Like board vacancies for the businesses. It's miscommunication, it's lack of understanding. Yeah, how would you recommend implementing that? Um, well, one thing I would suggest in the past was um, going to a channel doing presentations. Yes. Yeah. Really do think that might be a good option. Um, but I do think that that's something that the industrial, the people that sit on the industrial position need to help spearhead a little bit since that's their, their goal. And I think they do better at having them definitely be part of that. So maybe the next meeting just you know, ask if, if there is a appropriate chamber of commerce meeting that we could Find a time. No, I'm just talking about a recommendation. Oh, okay. Yeah. For me, that would be something. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm actually myself going to to have some recommendations. Okay, that's so great. I won't be. Yeah. And, I, and I can say that that was really something that's been on my radar from the beginning of yeah. that, that concept. So a recommendation is a great thing to put in along those lines. Increasing awareness and communication coordination. a way also, I mean, if you're already going to try and centralize the reporting streams, I wonder if there's a way to kind of incorporate business outreach into that. I mean, it's a bit long, but if you're already just, you know, yeah. yeah. I don't know how, but. Yeah, I think the, what the problem is we've come up before about the business outreach is that um, it's not really the, the time that's set aside really for um, mm -hmm. Or a changed position, so it was really okay. something that had to be sort of more spearheaded by the board. Okay. So. Or recommending that it be put into his time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. But he is the face already, so. Right. Um, I, did, I personally still think that getting, you know, a marker down longer. Yeah. Someone wanting to go. It's really their their personal connections that makes the other folks on get on board with, with the program. Sure. Okay, is that, is that it? Okay. All right.
All right. So, um, it's, um, can I all formally uh, close the meeting? I'll state the meeting is adjourned. Is that right? Is that all I have to say? We're ready to vote. Yeah, there's no vote. All right. All right. Thank you all. Thank you.